It's ten years since Concord was retired. Is that the is that the right word to use? Such an iconic image, wasn't it? Whenever you hear this, I always think of Concord straight away, the old British Airways advert. British Airways announced the departure of Concord supersonic flight BA300 to Bahrain. We've been asking, have you ever flown on Concord? Um, Anthony Loveless got in touch with us via Twitter. Anthony, I mean, you, you're, a, you're a, a writer and also a photojournalist as well. You've been on Concord. Isn't that right? It was my life, I think. You what, sorry? It was one of the best days of my life. <laughs> <laughs> what was it like? Come on. It was... I, I'm, I'm, a, I'm an experienced flyer, but nothing prepared me for the experience of taking off in Concorde. You, you felt it as soon as the pilot released the brakes at the threshold of the runway. And, I mean, those four engines on Concorde produced 38,000 pounds of thrust as the afterburners were introduced. And you felt it as a massive surge of power in the cabin as the aircraft was propelled forward. And, I mean, most, most conventional aircraft achieved takeoff speed at around 130 mile an hour. Concorde surged to 225 miles an hour over exactly the same distance to take off. So the acceleration was just immense. I can bet it was. It wasn't that big, though, was it? No, it it was. Um, it, it seated just a hundred people, and you sat uh, in. Uh, there were two seats on either side of the aisle. Mm-hmm. So it, it it was intimate. I mean, the the, the cabin. It, it was longer than a seven five seven, to put it in perspective. But it sat. It sat. At, sorry, it seated just a maximum of a hundred passengers, two abreast, and the ceiling was low, so it lent the cabin quite an intimate feel. But, I mean, once, once you were up in the cruise, it, it, it was just amazing. I mean, you, you, you flew up in the stratosphere. So the friction as the aircraft moves, moved through the thinner air used to cause the windows to heat up, and you could feel that heat when you touched them. <laughs> and it also caused the fuselage to stretch. So on the ground, it was 204 feet long, but in the heated airflow at Mach 2, when you were flying up at 60,000 feet, it expanded by two feet. Wow. I mean, it's incredible. The technology behind it. It, it. it seems such a shame that the technology behind Concorde has now... Well, it's not, it hasn't gone anywhere, but it's not being used. No, it, it, it's desperately sad. I mean, it, it's, it's left a gaping hole where, where, where there was a piece of futuristic technology. And it, I, I don't think there's ever been a comparable thing, certainly in our lifetimes or even before, where something that was so advanced that was available to us won't be available to our children or grandchildren. It's, it's just extraordinary. I mean, I'm, 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 I feel I'm, I'm really fortunate that uh, I, I got a chance to fly in an RAF tornado. And to do that, I had to wear a survival suit, a helmet, an oxygen mask, boots and gloves. <laughs> and in Concorde, we were flying higher than I flew in the tornado. We were going faster then we went in the tornado. Yeah, I was wearing a suit with with an open neck shirt, eating gourmet food and sipping Dom Perignon. <laughs> That's the life, isn't it? I, I, I don't. Do, do, do you remember B, BA ran a billboard ad, ad a few years ago, which I thought perfectly captured the essence of Concorde. It, it played on her unrivalled speed, and it simply featured a picture of the aircraft cruising at sixty thousand feet with that archetypal, that iconic image of the Earth visible below. And the copy was, again, just as simple as the image. It, it, it read, until they come up with a way to fax people. And to me, I thought that, that summed it up. It is, it is fantastic. It's such an iconic image as well. And when you saw Concorde fly over, I mean, there's no question, you knew exactly what it was. And when it was used uh, for state events, flying up the mall, surrounded by the Red Arrows and things like the Battle of Britain flight ahead of it or behind it, it's one of those iconic... UK images. Yeah, yeah, I mean, they're, they're, it, it's in perfect company, isn't it? The Red, the red Arrows and the Battle of Britain Memorial Flight, I mean, they, they, they all fit together. It, it, it's, to, to me, it was the closest thing to a time machine, this side of the HG Wells Classic. Out of all of the British Airways fleet, and we're going to talk to Pauline in just a second as well, there's um, one at Bristol, Manchester, Edinburgh, one at Heathrow, Seattle, New York, Bridgetown, Barbados, and Weybridge as well. And that one at Weybridge has never commercially flown. You would have thought 
And many people might have thought, well, surely there needs to be one that's kept airworthy so we can roll it out for all of these big events. Absolutely. I mean, I, th- I say I think we, we owe it to, to the next generation. That, that, that technology, it's still there. It's still capable of being flown. Richard Branson has, has said that he would put up the, the, the roughly £30 million cost of getting on airborne again. Richard Branson has said that he would fund it, which begs the question, why won't BA let Concorde fly again? Do you think it ever will? I'd like to believe it would, but there would have to be massive changes at, at BA for it to happen. Anthony? Thank you very much for joining us today. That's Anthony Lovelace, who's a, a journalist and also a photojournalist as well, writer, and has flown Concorde. Pauline! Hello. You've flown Concorde. I have. What was it like? Oh, fabulous. Everything that that gentleman's <laughs> just said, it was the, exactly. Where did, you, where did you fly? We flew from Manchester to Russia. Wow. It did was a, My husband actually won it, so it didn't cost us a penny. Even better. Yeah. We went to the Bolshoi Valley while we were in Russia and we were given the gourmet food and champagne on the plane and coming back we had champagne and we said to him, can we take uh, an empty bottle home with us, this empty bottle home with us as a um, souvenir and he said no (gasps) and we said oh okay fine and he turned around, picked a full one up and said but you can take this one. Very nice. It was wonderful. We actually went up on the flight deck as well. That's classy, that. Oh, it was fantastic. Did you feel when you were boarding Concorde that you, you know, you'd you'd gone on... It sounds a bit elitist, this. It's not meant to be, but you almost feel like you've gone on to another level here. Yes. Yes, it was wonderful. And on the way back, Concorde actually broke its own airspeed record. Oh wow! So you got you were there by yeah. the old thing that went like Mac yeah. One or whatever. Yes. Wow. Yeah, it was fabulous. I'll never forget it. Did you get your um, pictures? Yes. Did you take a knife and fork? Um, and a, a dish and a plate and um, <laughs> and I can't find them. I've only what? I can only find the dish. I can't find the others because we we didn't live here when we did it. It's oh, it must be at least. 15 year if not more ago and we've moved since and they seem to have vanished oh no i'm surprised you got back through customs after all that well yeah but we did because we went with a company you see so um but yeah we did and it was fantastic in fact he played out with me did the steward because I had a cup of coffee or tea and I let him take the cup and then I said, I haven't got a cup and saucer. And he said, well, you should have kept the one you had. He said, you you know, you should have kept that one. I can't really bring you another. And I thought, oh, no. Oh, you <laughs> but, missed out there. We did get some things from it. So, yes, and I've, I've still got at least one dish. And was it a once-in-a-lifetime experience? Yes. How yeah. did you feel then, ten years ago, when you saw, and we have a little bit of footage here. So two down, one to go. We're just waiting on the arrival of that final Concorde from New York. I can see it just off to my left, and there is a real buzz of excitement in the grandstand. I mean, were you upset ten years ago when Concorde was grounded? It was sad, very sad, yes. Yeah, um, because it was an absolutely fantastic plane. And, um, you know, uh, as the gentleman before me said, the takeoff was absolutely, oh, it was the best takeoff I've ever been on. It just took your stomach with you, and it was, <laughs> oh, John, I know you're learning to fly, and I wish you could have um, I wish I could have been on it. It was, yeah, it was great. Pauline, that is fantastic. Thank you so much for getting in touch with us. Something I'll never forget. Absolutely. You lucky devil. <laughs> Good luck lucky. with your flying. Oh, I'll need it. <laughs> you lucky, lucky devil. Pauline, thank you very much for getting in touch. And go go hunting around your house looking for those saucers and dishes and cups from Concord. Ten years it's been grounded. What a 